Hello, uh, this is the second part of the introduction to shader technology lecture. If you haven't yet watched uh, the part one, you should definitely do it now before watching uh, this installment. And uh, the link to this uh, lecture you should find in the card somewhere, somewhere there in the top of the window. In the previous part, we have discussed the extensions in OpenGL and we moved on to the programmable pipeline, all the shaders. We were also looking into GLSL programs and particularly how to prepare them for use. In uh, this installment, we will be uh, analyzing the language, uh, the GLSL language, and we will also look into some simple shader programs, including basic transformations and simple lighting. So, GLSL, the language. It is closely based on C, which is uh, good news because this means that uh, we have very similar syntax and nearly the same preprocessor. There are some differences and some of them quite exciting. For example, various uh, new types of variables, uniform, vertex attributes, more about it later. Interesting built-in data time types like uh, vectors and matrices and uh, uh, quite a powerful thing, a matrix and vector operations as a part of the language. So, this is a very simple vertex shader. Vertex shader is a small program uh, which uh, processes the shade, uh, sorry, vertex information and should produce uh, the uh, transformation of transform position of the of a vertex and most often the color. As you can see, uh, the syntax is indeed similar to uh, C. Uh, there are some specific aspects. Uh, for example, uh, GLSL program should start with uh, a directive uh, specifying the version 330 in this case. Uh, that's the minimum version. Um, so this program will be compatible with uh, all versions of OpenGL 3.30 and above. Then we have these uh, uniforms which are different from uh, C++ as well as in and out. Yeah, uh, but there are also some similarities and first of all a GLSL program must contain a function called main, which is a common characteristic with uh, the C language. Um, one more addition which is uh, pretty much specific for vertex shader is this. It looks like a um, typical variable and from the syntax point of view this is a variable, this is just a standard assignment operation, but GL position is a predefined GLSL variable and uh, quite an exceptional situation is it's mandatory to store a value in the GL position variable. I will explain it um, later on, so let's uh, go to a the general structure. So, as I mentioned, GLSL requires a version directive, like version 3.30, and expects a main function. Uh, variable declarations and statements generally follow C or C++ or Java syntax. From C++ and Java, the main difference is, of course, uh, GLSL is not an object-oriented language, so you don't have classes, objects, this kind of stuff. All right, uh, talking about variables, there y you saw some examples of qualifiers. There are special, four special qualifiers for variables in GLSL. Uniform means that this is a value directly passed from application. In our case, this is a C++ application. And these uh, variables cannot be changed at any moment uh, during the pipeline. So they can only be uh, set or written externally by the main application at the CPU. In or input are the variables received from the previous element in the pipeline. So for the vertex shader, uh, these are vertex attributes. So data coming directly uh, 
from the, the VBO's vertex buffer objects. I hope you more or less know what uh, what they are. Uh, output or out. These are variables sent to the following element in the pipeline. And for example, for the vertex shader, this is usually the color value which is sent over to the fragment shader. And there is also the fourth qualifier const, which has the same meaning as in C and C++. Data types um, are based roughly based on C data types. So you can see uh, the void type, which only can be used as the return type for functions. And of course means a function that does not return any value. We also have bool, int, uint, which stands for uh, unsigned and float. Uh, GLSL doesn't have a double uh, data type, uh, but what it has, um, it has built-in vectors, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four-dimensional, vec2, vec3, vec4. By default, uh, the vector types are uh, float value ve vectors, but you can also have vectors of boolean like bvec2, bvec3, bvec4. Of course, 2, 3, and 4 uh, refers to the dimensionality to, of, of these uh, vectors. ivec is a vector of integer, uvec is a vector of unsigned integer. Um, in overwhelming majority of cases, you will be using float value vectors, so vec2, vec3, and vec4. And we also have matrices. All matrices are float values, there are no integer matrices and so on. And mat2, mat3, mat4 are two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four-dimensional matrices. Then mat2 mat times two, three times three, four mat times four are basically the same as mat3, mat3, mat2, mat3, and mat4. So two, three, four-dimensional matrices. And there are also types not very often used, uh, I have to say, uh, data types that represent uh, matrices uh, of rectangular shapes, so 2 by 3, 2 by 4, and so on. Uh, most often you will be using uh, 3D vectors, VEC3, sometimes 2D vectors, VEC2, for example, to specify texture coordinates, and then three and four dimensional matrices, mat3, mat4. All of our data types are provided, but they will be rarely used. Moving on, uh, GLSL has arrays and structures just like C, so you can freely use them. Uh, now, we have vectors, as, as you saw in the previous, uh, previous slide, and they can be accessed like structures using the specific names. And uh, quite a, a funny thing is that you have several sets of names to choose from. So, uh, quite obviously, uh, these are x, y, z, w. Okay, if the vector contains coordinate data, then you can access all four components, up to four components, in the case of VEC4, for dimensional vector, as x, y, z, w. If the vector contains uh, color data, it's RGBA. And for texture coordinates, it's STPQ. In fact, GLSL will never know what you keep inside the vector, so it's entirely up to you. The only thing is that you must not mix va various naming conventions. So if you decided that uh, vector 1 is XY and vector 2 is RG, then everything is perfectly fine, but avoid using VEC1B or VEC2X, okay? because this would be uh, mixing. In some cases, mixing is allowed, okay? Uh, GLSL is not very restrictive um, language, but uh, in the very next slide, I will show you uh, a situation in which you really have to keep to one convention. Matrix components may be accessed like arrays, so um, you can access uh, elements, items of the matrix by providing the column and row in the syntax as shown here. 
constructors. Constructors must not be mixed with class constructors in C++. Uh, constructors in GLSL are totally different uh, thing. Very nice thing, actually, and uh, very, very flexible. Uh, constructors make a lot of power of GLSL's, GLSL language. And you should also know that uh, those constructors quite closely reflect the hardware architecture of the uh, GPU. So each time you use constructors, you can be absolutely confident that they will be translated into a very, very fast GPU code. So uh, basically, uh, constructors may be used to uh, create for example, three-dimensional vector, VEC3. And this looks indeed a little bit C++-ish. Uh, however, in C++, you would need to uh, proceed this expression here with the data name, uh, data type name, VEC3. Uh, no such thing in GSL. So just 000, zero, zero in brackets, that's a uh, initializer for a VEC4. Now, a nice thing is that uh, if you want to extend a three-dimensional vector to four-dimensional vector, you don't have to specify all four components of the 4D vector if you already have a 3D vector. So you can just create a 4D VEC4 providing a 3D value of POS3, our previous variable, and just uh, adding information, okay, and the fourth component will be 1.0. Uh, it is possible to create another variable as uh, POS4X, POS4Y, POS4Z. So um, contract this uh, four-dimensional vector into a three-dimensional vector. But the nice thing is uh, that you can also use a very specific uh, GLSL syntax like this. POS4.XYZ. It's um, called swizzling. Okay? Uh, so the meaning of this instruction is exactly the same as of this longer form here. We just take x, y, z component of POS4 and uh, store them as x, y, z of the uh, variable b here. Uh, funny things about it, uh, you can uh, change the direction of this x, y, z, for example, because it may be RGB or... Uh, and if you uh, have something like z, y, x, this means that z will be uh, stored as x, y will be stored as y, and x will be stored as z. So basically, before uh, transmitting this data to the variable c, we will, uh, or GLSL will swap the x and z value. And it is also possible that you take a three-dimensional vector, like POS3, and you only assign a part of this uh, vector. So POS3.x would be natural also in C, but POS3.xy equals a uh, two-dimensional vector. This syntax is quite nice and it's characteristic to uh, GLSL. Um, actually, to be precise, I have to say that uh, very similar syntax is available also in other shader uh, languages. So. Uh, this uh, techniques like swizzling, constructors, and so on, they are uh, characteristic for most uh, uh, shader languages, not just GLSL. Moving on to operators, nearly the same set of operators as what you know in C or Java. Of course, there are no specific object-oriented operators, but all the other stuff like uh, arithmetics, logic, comparisons, a Boolean logic, um, uh, bitwise logic, whatever, is available in GLSL. Operations on floats, integers, and signed are exactly what you would expect. So this is very, this is, um, very easy to, to start for C programmers. So what's special about operators? So first of all, operators operating on vectors. Uh, operators on vectors work component by component, so you can very easily and naturally add vectors and they will be added uh, like in vector algebra. Multiply vector by a number, easy peasy. 
uh, multiply vector by vector and this will multiply each component by each component so like x times x y plus y z plus z times z uh, you can also uh, add matrices in this way uh, matrices however will be quite special are quite special because multiplication involving matrices will always use standard linear or vector algebra rules so that you can multiply matrices and vectors and ma multiply matrices by other matrices and stay confident that this will be done mathematically in a mathematically correct way. Statements. No, that's, uh, that's a nice thing but if you know C you know GLSL statements. If, if, else, for, while, do, while, it's all in GLSL in the same form as in C. Uh, the slide that I'm about to display now is one of the most fundamental sprites to understand the structure of uh, uh, shader program, various shaders, uh, shader programs. It's not so much about the language at this moment or syntax of the language, um, but this is something that you should really, really, really uh, look into, well understand and use in practice. So basically this is uh, about uh, data. So this box represents uh, your application. In our exercises, our practical programming activities, this is the C++ uh, program. And uh, uh, this, in this C++ program you can set up uniform variables. If you don't know exactly what it is, this means that you might need to refresh the part one of this uh, lecture. Okay, and we also have uh, vertex attributes. Vertex attributes are the data that are packed into buffers and sent to VBO objects, vertex buffer objects, that reside in the graphics card memory. So these are two main sources of data, very much different sources, okay, because vertex attributes you have to pack into uh, buffers, right, but uh, uh, in most cases you just import them from a 3D mesh file and this uh, 3D mesh is just a vertex buffer and you send it to the VBO, forget about it, okay, vertex attributes. And uniform variables you can specifically uh, set up in your C++ code and send over to the, the graphics card, to the shader. Alright, so uh, these two uh, data streams arrive to the vertex shader and now if you want to use a uniform variable set from uh, the C++ language in your vertex shader program you have to add this uniform specifier at the beginning of the uh, declaration of the variable. So in this case you have a four-dimensional four matrix and three-dimensional vector representing material, so probably a color, RGB. Um, in terms of uh, vertex attributes, uh, to declare a variable as a vertex attribute in vertex shader, you have to use the in specifier. In specifier, as I mentioned uh, earlier in this part of the lecture, um, means that this is the input from the previous uh, previous link in the chain or in the in the pipeline. Okay, but uh, in case of the vertex shader, which is the very first part of the pipeline, uh, this previous uh, previous step is uh, the VBO, it's the memory of the graphics card. Right, so it uh, I think it makes sense. And the uh, vertex shader can have two different types of uh, outputs. So first of all, this is an output value, out vec4. Out means that it will be sent over to the next uh, um, element in the pipeline. And in our case, most often this will be the fragment shader. But there is another output val variable here, a very special one, because it's mandatory. Uh, you will basically fail with uh, linking uh, the vertex shader program unless you contain, you include in your code an assignment in which the GL position variable will be set. Please note that GL position variable is uh, write only. You cannot read from GL position, but you can write 
a value there. What happens with these uh, output uh, values? So, first of all, the geo position will go into geometry rasterization module, which is the fixed functionality of the graphics card. So, um, it um, it cannot be. I know that there are geometry shaders, but uh, um, they are slightly further on the in the pipeline. Uh, basically, GL position uh, goes into the hardware fixed part of the pipeline, and you cannot do anything further with this. But it's crucial that you provide uh, the transform position of your vertex in this very GL position. All right, and as uh, as you <laughs> have good, very good reasons to, to guess, the color is sent directly to the fragment shader, and uh, to see this correspondence between the output in the vertex shader and input in the fragment shader, uh, there are two important conditions. The uh, first condition is you have to use the specifier in, in the fragment shader, and of course out in the vertex shader, and also this, this variable must share the same name and the same data type. Um, communication between vertex shader and fragment shader is not limited just to colors, and we will use a lot, really a lot of output variables that will be sent as input for the fragment shader. And the fragment shader uh, typically um, defines uh, one output variable, which is the four-dimensional color value, uh, which specifies the color of the uh, fragment, final color of the fragment. It may be affected by uh, fragment shader-based lighting, texturing, many other techniques, um, but the main duty of the fragment shader is to produce this out color because this out color will be consumed by the frame buffer, so the final stage of the pipeline. Uh, please note that uh, vertex shader and fragment shader are two programmable elements of this pipeline. Vertex shader is quite close to the beginning of the pipeline, and fragment shader is quite close to the end of this, um, of this um, uh, pipeline. All right, moving on. Oh, uh, sorry, I've forgotten one thing. Uh, uniform variables are not only about the vertex shader. Uniform variables will also uh, arrive to any other shader, including the fragment shader. So, we are now moving on to a very basic vertex shader. Uh, this basic sh vertex shader is uh, a little bit more complex uh, uh, than the shader I showed you in the very beginning of this part of the lecture, uh, because we have a proper lighting here, but let's analyze it step by step. So, first of all, we have this uh, version directive, which is mandatory. We have uh, three uniform variables, and this is the projection matrix model view matrix and the material. Material will be used to uh, provide colors to objects. Okay, so we use so-called solid material. So just a color value, RGB. And um, I hope by now you know what projection model and view matrices stand for. We also have two input variables, vertex and normal. They have these uh, letters A at the beginning to make it easier uh, to recognize in the code that these are attribute uh, vector, uh, sorry, uh, vertex attributes. Okay, so vertex is the vertex coordinate, and normal are the uh, vertex normal coordinates. And we also have specified a four-dimensional output color, will be, which will be sent over to the uh, fragment shader. But before this happens, we will calculate the uh, shading or lighting value and store it in this variable. And we have, uh, uh, so these were vertex attributes and output variable. I've forgotten, but I have nice uh, labels to various parts of this program. Uh, the next part is the main function, and this is uh, applying projection and matrix view transforms to the vector vertex 4D vector. So what happens here? 
First of all, uh, vertices typically come in the VBO as uh, 3D values, X, Y, Z only. But to provide all the uh, required uh, transformations, 3D transformations, uh, we need four-dimensional matrices, so we will also need four-dimensional vectors. A very important uh, thing, you cannot multiply a 4D matrix by 3D vector, because this kind of operation is mathematically undefined. So if you have a three-dimensional 3D vertex, and you need to uh, multiply it by a 4D matrix, the first thing is to promote your vertex from 3D to 4D. And for this, we use a simple constructor. So we create or construct a VEC4 value, which will have a vertex as the X, Y, Z values, plus 1.0 as the W, the fourth dimension value. And uh, this 4D vector will be multiplied firstly by the model view matrix and then projection matrix. And this is everything we have to do um, to transform our uh, vertex properly. Okay, or is it? It's uh, just one step to, to succeed. We have to do the mandatory part. So we have to store this position, calculated position, in the variable GL position. You might ask if I could just have something like GL position equals projection matrix and model view matrix and so on. Of course you could, uh, but this is a little bit uh, better style of programming, highly recommended for GLSO. And the reason for that is uh, GL position is a write-only variable. You cannot read this variable. So uh, we uh, don't use this POS value uh, anymore in this simple program. But the reason for that is because this program is very simple. Normally, you would uh, quite often uh, want to access the position value calculated here. And if you would uh, store it in GL position, it's like black hole. You can send stuff there, but you cannot read from there. So it's better to have a local variable like this, or perhaps a global variable, uh, store this value there, and then send it to a GL position. Uh, the rest of this code is the light calculation. So we have uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, I all the time keep forgetting about my beautiful labels here. All right, so light data. We have direction, and this is the vector showing uh, or s providing the direction of the uh, light, um, okay? So uh, where the light is located. And uh, uh, also we have the ambient light, a small additional color uh, provided to uh, brighten up deep shadows. Uh, for the main uh, light calculation, we will be using Fong diffuse model. And just a quick uh, refresh, refreshing Fong diffuse light. This slide is borrowed from our first uh, lecture in 3D technology. So we have some surface, okay, and the source of the light. Uh, the difference between this picture and the situation we have in our shader is we have even simplified it a little bit because uh, this shader implements the directional light. So uh, this, this um, uh, light rays are all parallel, okay, not originating from a single point. And this is uh, quite a useful lighting model, um, simpler than this, but quite useful because directional light is quite often used to uh, model uh, very distant uh, light sources, for example, uh, sunlight, okay, daylight. So basically, uh, the brightness of lighting depends on the difference between uh, the normal of the uh, surface and the so-called light vector. Okay, so if uh, a surface is uh, facing uh, the source of the light or the direction of the light, 
then the L and N, the light vector and the normal vector, will be close together. And if it is not so much facing uh, the light, it should be darker than shaded, okay? And uh, the angle between N and L will be bigger. So, surface is brighter when directly facing the light. Shading intensity depends on the angle between the surface normal vector and the light vector, so we will have to find both these vectors in our code. Additionally, we will be using light color and material color. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, our simple shader doesn't have light color, so we assume that the light is uh, white colored, but we are using the material color. Material color is uh, called in physics reflectivity because this is the color of the reflected light. And uh, here is the mathematical formula for the diffuse light intensity. It's uh, uh, the color, material color in our case, times L dot N. Dot is the dot product. This is a, a value which is uh, higher for vectors pointing into the same to the same direction and lower for uh, vectors that are uh, not so much together. Okay, so this is exactly what we need. Uh, this is the mathematical tool modeling uh, the intensity of light in the form lighting model. So, let's go back to our coding example. Uh, this is how we find the, the normal vector and it cannot be just a normal, uh, the vertex attribute, because the normal, just like, uh, uh, just like uh, uh, the coordinate, have to be transformed and uh, we transform this only by matrix model view, please note that uh, normals shouldn't be uh, transformed by the projection matrix. And I will explain a little bit more about the mathematical details of this uh, calculation in our next session, which will be specifically about uh, uh, lighting. Uh, for now, just uh, uh, take home messages. The normal has to be transformed, has to be transformed by the model view matrix only. And this should be the 3D, three dimensional uh, transformation. I will also tell you next time why is that so. Uh, basically, uh, when you calculate uh, uh, the transformations, you rather tend to promote uh, the vertex coordinates to 4D. And here you demote the matrix to 3D. Anyway, N will contain the transformed value of the normal and L will contain the light direction which we have set up here. Okay, And just to be on the safe side, it's uh, been normalized. And uh, actually the safe side is, was, was very important because um, our light direction vector wasn't normalized. And uh, uh, just such a detail, Fong diffuse light will only work properly with normalized vectors. So both N and L must be normalized, okay? And we always want to be on the safe side, even if uh, normal vectors should normally come as uh, normalized. We will additionally normalize them uh, if not for any other reason, uh, it's uh, quite possible that your model, model transform, contains some scaling. And uh, a vector scaled, even if, if it was normalized before, it won't be normalized anymore. So you have to normalize these uh, vectors. And uh, here there is a dot NL, dot product between N and L calculated. I will also have here such a small trick, maximum value between the dot product value and zero. Uh, this is basically to uh, reject negative values. Uh, the form diffuse light model uh, tends to produce negative values uh, for the off light, the other side, the shaded side of objects. We don't want this, okay? 
Uh, the graphics card will have absolutely no idea how to display a negative color value, so we cut off any negative values, so it's impossible to get anything less than zero here. And the final calculation uh, takes uh, what we got from the diffuse light and auto, adds uh, to that the ambient light which uh, we provided here, okay? So it's to brighten up this scene a little bit. And all this is multiplied by material promoted to 4D uh, because the material initially was uh, three-dimensional vector. Um, and this is stored as the output variable, uh, color variable, color value for the fragment shader. And that's, uh, that's all. Uh, now, it may look a little bit uh, tricky here with all those uh, data conversions, okay? You have a vertex here and you have to uh, promote it to 4D. You have a four-dimensional matrix here, you need to uh, demote it to 3D. You had a material which was a vector, of a three-dimensional vector, you had to promote it to 4D. But when you write the code, you will see that uh, uh, GLSL will actually um, train you to do all this stuff because each time you try to multiply a, multiply a 3D vector by 4D vector, you will get errors, okay? And uh, you have to read the error messages and understand these error messages. And if the error messages tells you that you mixed up 3D and 4D, you have to know what to do. And uh, the options basically are either to promote um, a 3D part to 4D or demote 4D to 3D uh, carefully because uh, uh, promoting sometimes leaves the data that you don't want to keep and demoting can remove data that are still necessary for you. Uh, but uh, it's enough for now. You should have some general understanding of this. If it was a little bit uh, um, chaotic, uh, don't worry, you will have a lot of practice with GLSL. This was just the first attempt, right? And uh, more about it at the next session. But before I tell you thank you for watching and so on, uh, we have to go ahead, go on to move on to the very basic fragment shader. And this one is really very basic. So you can see the color value which was out VEC4 in the uh, vertex shader. So it has to be in VEC4 color in the fragment shader. And we have um, obligatory output color, color output, sorry, color output. Um, they are the same time VEC4, type, sorry, the same type VEC4 and VEC4. So the only thing that this shader does, it copies input to output. Out color becomes color, and that's, that's all. I have my, uh, of course, always forgotten, uh, sorry, always forgotten uh, uh, labels. Uh, here they are. This is uh, everything that I wanted to tell you as the first introductory lecture about uh, shader technology. From the next session, you will concentrate on uh, various aspects of so the very next session is about uh, the proper lighting. What we had done in uh, one of the previous uh, slides was uh, just a very rudimentary uh, function, just a directional light simplified, not working really well, okay? And uh, at the next session, you will see how to produce, uh, first of all, directional, but also point, value, uh, point light, um, of course, ambient light, and also the specular light. So, I invite you to this uh, next session, but uh, for now, I thank you very much for watching, and uh, see you in the next pre-recorded material. Thank you.